The feral predator seen within prey is a very interesting case, and much debate has been swirling around online concerning its subspecies, its status, and its experience level. In today's video, I will be doing my best to compile all of the information I can to give you the most detailed breakdown of this Diawucha, as well as a theory on its blooded status, as I think I have a unique perspective on the matter, which I did briefly cover in my Deadliest Predator video. For this video, I will be considering some lore from the Alien vs. Predator films, as they do a lot of heavy lifting in the lore department, and while these films are no longer considered canon, they do still help frame a lot of the Yawucha history, rituals, and customs that help us understand more about them. But before we dig into the Feral Predator specifically, let me give you a brief history of the Yawucha themselves. The Yaucha are apex predators who hail from their home planet of Yaucha Prime. The primary goal of all Yaucha is to become an honored member of their species, and to do that, they must hunt the deadliest prey in the universe, Xenomorphs. All Yaucha yearn to take down a Xenomorph and ascend to blooded status, which makes them well respected within their culture. If a Yaucha ever wants to venture out on their own unsupervised hunts, they must first prove themselves by stalking and killing a Xenomorph. Once the unblooded has done so, they return with the skull and spine of the alien and achieve the rank of blooded and are given their iconic shoulder mounted plasma caster. However, because of the plasma caster's overwhelming power, it is considered the least honorable way to kill prey on a hunt. However, not all Yaucha are made equal. There are various species and subspecies of Yaucha that have evolved over time to suit their environment and predatory needs. After becoming blooded, Yaucha travel alone to various planets where they carry on with their ritualistic hunts, which include all manner of highly skilled warriors and apex predators of other planets. They do this to continue their ascent up the ranks. Yaucha begin at unblooded. Once they've killed a xenomorph, they reach young blood, or more commonly known as blooded. A young blood in some clans is an unblooded Yaucha, while in others it means a blooded Yaucha who has just recently killed a Xenomorph. The Feral Predator is a subspecies of Yaucha that we have never seen before. As detailed in a thread of tweets from the Predator's designer, genetic isolation with different environmental pressures yielded this variant of Yaucha who adapted to a drier climate. He has thinner, waxier dreads, thicker oral tissue, and scalier skin for moisture retention. His large mouth has evolved this way as he favors a crushing bite for a different diet compared to the standard Yaucha. He breathes primarily through spiracles in the cask, not those two big cavities, those are heat sensitive pits an adaptation for a less jungly, less oxygenated atmosphere. A thicker brow houses heat sensitive organs which the mask is designed to interface with, and a thinner cask loses less water. Bone has a special cultural significance for the feral subspecies, not just in their armor, but as well as a dietary staple. A careful look at the mouth reveals molars outfitted for osteophagy, which is the practice in which animals consume bones, something standard Yaucha are not evolved to do. The feral predator was dropped off by his clan, unlike the jungle hunter who used a drop pod. And this is the first instance of a predator hunting on Earth, retconning AVP entirely. So the feral predator begins scouting and stalking its prey throughout the North American wilderness, with its first kill being a venomous rattlesnake. However, he decided not to claim the skull of the snake, seemingly deeming it unworthy of the honor. Next, it studied a wolf who was on the hunt for a rabbit. This is where we first see the Yaucha's preferred hunting technique, which is to get up close and personal, preferring to fight in close quarters combat rather than kill from a distance. I've heard a lot of chatter saying that this style is due to the predator's inexperience. However, I don't think that's the case and I think that's a rather silly argument to make. Even the most inexperienced hunters know it's easier to kill with your ranged weapon rather than your bare hands. So a Yaucha raised in a society which does nothing but hunt would be aware of this very, very simple fact. However, we know through various sources that Yaucha adhere to a strict honor code, and part of this code is killing more powerful prey while simultaneously using less equipment is considered to be more impressive and a greater prize, 
predators should typically give their prey a fighting chance for honor's sake. If the prey demands close combat, the hunter is to fight to their prey's standards and should minimize the use of their plasma caster or other projectile weapons. So I believe this hunting method is a combination of the predator's hubris and its desire to claim more impressive prizes as a part of a competition with its clan. As I mentioned previously, the feral predator was dropped off and another Yaucha piloted the ship away. I believe that this was one of his clan members and I think I know which clan he belongs to. This clan being the Lost Tribe who was seen at the end of Predator 2. The leader of the Lost Tribe, Greyback, had in his possession the flintlock pistol that the feral predator was shot with during prey. So that's the first major piece of evidence. I know that we see in a Predator comic book series how Greyback obtained the pistol, but that is almost certainly going to be retconned by Disney in their new continuity. So with that in mind, it's likely Greyback's Lost Tribe were doing hunts all over the planet, as that is what they were doing during Predator 2. The City Hunter was recently blooded and wanted a challenge. His leader, Greyback, thought Los Angeles would work well and dropped the City Hunter there. While some unblooded observed from the ship with Greyback, the city hunter was not on his first hunt or his ceremonial hunt to become blooded. Also, he was quote unquote unsupervised, meaning that the other predators weren't watching him to determine whether or not he was worthy to become blooded. So the feral predator could have been blooded and was killing within close quarters to impress his clan with more difficult to earn trophies. This would make sense, especially if the rest of his clan members were also hunting all across the planet at the same time, hunting different species to garner more impressive trophies to return with at the end of the hunt. With this theory in mind, it makes sense that the feral predator would allow the wolf and the bear to engage in close quarters combat. It wasn't because of inexperience, but rather a desire to show his clan just how honorable and impressive he was. The actor who played the predator even stated that there's a sense of hubris and a lack of refinement with the feral predator, and maybe, you know, he's a bit younger, but that doesn't mean he was unblooded. Again, the city hunter was a blooded yaucha. He had the same exact issues, just amplified to a crazy degree, and I think the feral predator is a parallel to the city hunter, who was so out of control that at one point Greyback was going to send in Warrior to kill the city hunter had he not been taken down at the end of the movie. But I do think the feral predator was far more honorable than the city hunter for the most part. He never attacked any helpless prey. In fact, he declined to attack Naru several times throughout the film despite witnessing her abilities a few times. If she was ever seemingly unarmed and helpless, he would ignore her which eventually led to his ultimate demise. However, I wouldn't say he was entirely honorable, as he killed the injured and helpless bear trapper, but the guy did scream out, so he may have thought this was a Comanche war cry, which signals an attack. He had seen the Comanche warriors do this previously, so I can't say that this was definitively a dishonorable action. Additionally, he recloaked himself when he was struggling with the agility of Tabe and killed him in what I would consider a dishonorable manner. However, he did do it within close quarters. Another point of contention many bring up in their assumption that this Yaucha is unblooded is the lack of a plasma caster. As detailed in Alien vs Predator, one does not receive a plasma caster until they've killed their first xenomorph. However, I think the weapon we see him use could be a more primitive version of a plasma caster. First, he has a projectile weapon linked to his helmet, and you have to remember that Prey takes place hundreds of years prior to Predator, so this could be the plasma caster of the time. Now, I know in ancient times, the Yaucho were shown to have plasma casters during a flashback in Alien vs Predator, however, again, that is a separate canon, so that alone couldn't determine the blooded status of the feral predator. Continuing along with his hunts, he kills a bear next, again with his bare hands, when any of his various projectiles could have done the trick. Then came the Comanche warriors. While he does use his projectile weapon against them, they were armed with their own projectile weapons. Not to mention he only actually kills one of them with his projectile weapon, he immediately gets into a hand-to-hand -hand confrontation with them after the first kill. Finally, the bear trappers. In this case, he could not cloak himself as the ash in the air did not allow him to do so, but he used all manner of weaponry here to take each of them out, leaving the helpless Tabe and Naru as a point of honor. 
When he eventually loses, he's shot point blank in the back of the head. A lot of weirdos out there have a problem with Naru defeating the apex predator, but she was smart and played to the predator's honor bound weakness. Surely he was dazed, confused, or at the very least hampered in some way by the shot to the back of the head, giving Naru a major advantage in their final fight, which allowed her to lure him into a trap. After taking his head back to her tribe, Naru witnesses more Yaucha ships emerging from the sky. Again, I believe this is the Lost Tribe venturing back to Earth, possibly to show their respect to Naru, just as Greyback did after the City Hunter was defeated by Mike Harrigan. So I think there is a strong case for the Feral Hunter to be either blooded or unblooded. I wanted to clear up some misconceptions with the Predator being inexperienced or just stupid. I think what drove him was the honor code and his desire to impress his tribe. And again, if he was blooded, then killing a Xenomorph might make him feel invincible. After all, they're the deadliest prey in the universe, right? So after killing one of those, he probably believed he was unstoppable. But that's just my theory. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Do you think this guy was blooded? Do you think he was unblooded? I personally believe that he was definitely part of the Lost Tribe and we may see them in the future. The sequels to Prey may actually be concurrent hunts taking place throughout the planet. We could see another member of the Lost Tribe fighting samurai or some other member of the Lost Tribe fighting pirates. Who the hell knows? Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next. And remember to like and subscribe. It does really, really help us out. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And remember the motto, it's predators over everything. And I'll see you guys next time.